if I get nothing else right this season, at least I predicted the Colts would either give the Chiefs a hard time and or beat them. And it wasn't because of the team. It wasn't because of the weather. It was because that this season is pure chaos. Grassy Posse Packer Nation, welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to pack shit, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Yeah, again, we're we're just we're just guessing at this point. Grassy, and today we are going to be predicting every single game in the Week Four lineup. And folks, we finally have some good primetime games, or at least they should be better than Week Three. Now, last week. I did the Jeff Fisher. I went eight and eight. Here are the games that I got wrong. Here are the games that I got right. And we just wound up at 500. How anybody is predicting these games with any kind of accuracy, I know not. But let's start off with this Thursday night. A fantastic game between the Miami Dolphins. The only team that is undefeated in the AFC taking on the Kitty Goes Meow Cincinnati Bengals. The Dolphins able to knock off the Super Bowl contending Buffalo Bills in Miami. Dolphins are on a hell of a run right now after coming back and defeating the Ravens in week two. They were able to really just frustrate the Buffalo Bills and take advantage of their mistakes. Tua looking uh, pretty damn good under Mike McDaniel's new offense. Because I'm a big snack time guy. The Dolphins... They look like they're on fire right now, which would be a problem. But maybe it's not a problem because they're an aquatic mammal. So they're in the water. So maybe someone tries to light them on fire. It's just steam. They're taking on the Bengals, who got their first win against the New Jersey Jets last week. The Bengals finally, uh, Joe Burrow not throwing any interceptions also wasn't destroyed behind that offensive line, and they're going to need a whole lot more of that. They're playing against a good defense and a good offense in the Miami Dolphins, and while it is being played in Cincinnati, I feel like the Dolphins are just the better team right now. The Bengals have been very slow coming out of the gate, so because of that, I am going to give this win to the Miami Dolphins, though this could be a really fun Thursday night football game. Following that, we got our first London game. That's right, get out your Peaky Blinders, get out your Harry Potter, get out your Benedict Cumberbatch, because we're going across the pond. Bloody hell. The Minnesota Vikings, the purple incarnation of Satan, taking on the New Orleans Saints. This game probably uh, expected to be a bit better uh, when they first scheduled it. Of course, you have the Minneapolis Miracle. There's a lot of history between these two teams, a lot of bad blood. But the Vikings able to have a comeback win against the Detroit Lions last week, though it's essentially where's Waldo with Justin Jefferson these past two weeks, especially if you're a fantasy owner because ain't nobody can find him. Meanwhile, the Saints, yeah, it's bad. It's uh, it's real bad. Jameis Winston ain't the answer. Chris Olave looking good, and maybe, maybe, since his last name is kind of spelled like Olive, and in London, he'll be closer to Italy, which is like the land of olives, he will draw his strength to be an unstoppable force. The Saints are probably going to lose this game. Their defense is really good. Marshawn Lattimore playing incredibly well. The offensive line and Jameis Winston just not putting it together. For the Saints, I unfortunately have the Vikings picking up a win here. They were able to utilize Dalvin Cook, get him involved in the run game last week. And while Justin Jefferson was nowhere to be seen, Kirk Cousins looked pretty decent. And on top of that, they had other receivers to pick up the slack. So the Vikings, unfortunately, I think will win this game. It's going to be bright. It's going to be early. And unfortunately, a sad start to the day if the Vikings win. Following that, you got the Cleveland Browns taking on the Atlanta Falcons. 
In the offseason, these were two teams that were in the sweepstakes to get to Sean Watson, which is a lottery I never want to be in because it feels like the prize is not a million dollars. It's just pain and bad publicity. Browns and Falcons able to come off with a win in week three. The Browns able to defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers, while the Falcons did not choke a lead away to the Seattle Seahawks. The Browns, I got to say, Jacoby Brissett looking great. Nick Chubb, phenomenal. Amari Cooper also looking really, really good. Miles Garrett involved in an accident. Hopefully he's okay. But with the Falcons, I mean, Marcus Mariota has been serviceable, but this has been the Cordaro Patterson season. He had a great season last year, a really great start to this year. However, I think the Browns are just going to be a little bit too much to overcome. Jacoby Brissett is more than serviceable right now. They have a dynamic running game, and they got some pretty good receivers. So I'm going to pick the Cleveland Browns to win this game. Though the Falcons, maybe they can turn it around. Maybe this isn't the end. Maybe the Falcons can rewrite destiny. Maybe they can become the best team in the... No, they're not. They're probably going to lose. Following that, you have one of the better games this week. You got the Buffalo Bills taking on the Baltimore Ravens, a game that honestly could be the Sunday night football matchup. The Bills coming off a loss against the Miami Dolphins, in which we talked about this on the rankings. You had the heat, you had the bad decision-making all around led to a loss. You also had their offensive coordinator absolutely losing their mind in the booth. Meanwhile, the Ravens, while they did try to blow a lead, did not against the New England Patriots. Lamar Jackson continuing to be arguably the best quarterback in the league right now. This should be a really, really fun game. And it's kind of a flip of the coin. Sorry, Bills, I know that brings up bad memories. The Bills honestly just have a ton of injuries on the defense and coming off a devastating loss, they're going into a hostile territory in Baltimore. I'm actually going to pick the Ravens to win this game. I think Lamar Jackson is just going to be too much for the Bills to contain. On top of that, J.K. Dobbins, he came back last week. If they get a running game going, I think the Ravens might be able to sneak one away. So I'm picking the Baltimore Ravens and... I'm sorry, Buffalo. I still like you. Then you got an NFC least battle, and I said that intentionally. You got the Washington Commanders taking on the Dallas Cowboys. The Commanders. Uh, Carson Wentz got sacked nine times. Their offensive line is garbage, and they have no offense. Except Scary Terry. Meanwhile, the Cowboys, their defense looks to be one of the best in the league. Their pass rush absolutely dominating the New Jersey Giants. And... I don't really have to talk about this game a whole lot. If the Eagles defense was able to do this against the Commanders last week, I can only imagine what the Cowboys are going to do. So I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win. Simply because the Commanders are the Commanders. Sorry, Wildflower. Oh, I don't even watch the games anymore. Following that, you got the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Detroit Lions. The Seahawks. Uh, Geno Smith played pretty well, except for that last interception. But their defense, not so great. Falling to the Atlanta Falcons. Meanwhile, the Lions were able to hold on to a lead for so long and then blew it to the Minnesota Vikings. They almost choked away a lead against the Washington Commanders. They did, unfortunately, choke away a lead in week three. The Lions, listen, everybody's rooting for them. People want them to win. A little disappointing last week. You got a bunch of injuries, not only in the secondary, but Amon Ross St. Brown also getting knocked around. DeAndre Swift is going to be out for a little bit. This could be a little bit of a closer game than some people may anticipate. I'm still going to pick the Lions to win because Jamal Williams, thrusting and all, has been able to get into the red zone. Jared Goff playing pretty darn well, and that defensive line I still think is good. So I'm going to pick Jared Goff and the Lions to win here, but... This is kind of a battle of two bad teams, unfortunately. Then you got the L.A. Chargers taking on the Houston Texans. The Chargers losing to the Jaguars last week, attempting to keep Justin Herbert on the field, though it was the same doctor that uh, treated Tyrod Taylor, and we know how that left off. Cue the psycho shower scene. Well, yeah, trying to keep them on the field like they're basically uh, working on the Terminator there. Go Chargers, go. 
But the Chargers have a ton of injuries right now. Rashawn Slater out for the year. Their defense is beat up. Bosa's beat up. Their secondary's beat up. Everybody's beat up right now. Meanwhile, the Texans haven't looked great, but they've at least been fighting in these past three weeks. They tied, of course, week one, and they're going down fighting against the Broncos, and they go down fighting against the Bears. And I feel like at one of these points, they're going to pull off a victory. The Chargers have no run game whatsoever, which is incredibly confusing because they have Austin Eckler, who's one of the best running backs in the game. Hopefully they get Keenan Allen back. And while again, I think the Texans time, it is coming. It's not going to be this week. I think the Chargers are going to win because I think they're just a better overall team. And Davis Mills, it doesn't matter how tall your deck is if you can't throw the ball. Then you have an AFC South matchup between the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts. Both teams coming off a big win last week. The Titans beating the Raiders and making them go 0-3 and starting 1-2 and on the season. And the Colts, after being shut out by the Jaguars, beat the Chiefs. Pick up the phone because I called it. Uh, and it really made no sense. However, the Colts' defensive line played really, really well against the Chiefs. They took advantage of the mistakes. Meanwhile, the Titans, Derrick Henry coming back to form a little bit. This should be a pretty close game. The Titans were able to have their way with the Colts last year, but I think maybe it will be a little bit different here. The Colts hopefully getting a little bit more of a groove. I think they'll win this game, though. Again, I don't know if anyone's going to have fun watching it. Following that, you got the Bears versus the Giants. It's going to be bad. Justin Fields, poo-poo. He's, he's not good, folks. And I know it's just week four, and I'm, and I'm trying. I'm trying not to be a homer, but he just hasn't been good. However, Dave Montgomery getting injured, even though he ran really well against the Packers in week two. Khalil mm. Herbert comes in, destroys. They had over 250 rushing yards against the Texans. And if the Bears are going to win this game, it's going to be through the run game. Meanwhile, the Giants had their undefeated streak ended on Monday Night Football against the Cowboys. They looked rough. Their offensive line, ooh, big oof. I'm going to pick the Giants to win this game simply because I do think they are the better team. The Bears, man, they just have one thing going for them, and that's the run game. Their defense isn't bad, don't get me wrong, but if the Giants are able to contain Herbert and force Justin Fields to win them the game, the guy is barely throwing any passes, so that should be pretty easy. So I'm going to pick the Giants to win. Then you got a little bit of an intriguing matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Philadelphia Eagles. Jaguars coming off a big win, as we talked about, against the Chargers. They're leading the AFC South. Trevor Lawrence looking better week by week. Then you got the Eagles. The best team in the NFC have proven that they can beat you all the ways. They can run it. Jalen Hurts can throw it. Their defense can kick your ass. It doesn't matter. This is being played in Philadelphia. And while the Jaguars had an away win for the first time in forever... I do think the Eagles should be able to pull off the victory. They just have an overall better team. But if the Jaguars win, I promise you, I will put them in the top five in the power rankings. Eagles, yeah, you're just going to stay in the top three. Then you got an AFC matchup between the New Jersey Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Jets. Zach Wilson just got cleared to play, so maybe if he's not too busy with the MILFs this weekend, that will give him a little extra boost. The Steelers. Yikes. Uh, Matt Canada needs to go to somewhere else. Somewhere else. Snoop Dogg is calling for him to be fired. And when Snoop Dogg calls you up and says, Hey, Mike, Coach Tomlin, this guy sucks. This is Snoop Dogg. Fire him. I mean, he's had a bunch of top 10 hits. Maybe you listen to him. Because the Steelers right now, they're smoking something if they think that this is a winning combination. Their offensive line, horrendous. Trubisky, not as bad as a lot of people are saying, but not great. Maybe you start Kenny Pickett. They just don't have a lot going for them right now. Even with Zach Wilson coming back, I don't know who's going to win this game. But I give a slight edge to the Jets. 
Their defense, meaning the Steelers, is not the same without TJ Watt. So I'm, I'm going to pick the Jets to win because I think their defense is going to overpower the offensive line of the Steelers, which is sad. But that's where we are now. Then we got the Arizona Cardinals versus the Carolina Panthers. Uh, this should be a barn burner of a game. The Cardinals unable to score a single touchdown against the LA Rams last week, while the Panthers were able to defeat the New Orleans Saints. Both teams, unimpressive. The Panthers hoping to lose this game, so Matt Rule just gets that much closer to being fired. The Cardinals, uh, is it a double XP week for Call of Duty? If so, gonna be tough for Kyler Murray. I'm going to pick the Cardinals to win because while the Panthers did defeat the Saints, I just think the Saints are that bad. So Cardinals, Kyler Murray, you could probably make something happen, at least until Modern Warfare 2 comes out. Then they're just going to lose the rest of the season. Then you got the New England Patriots taking on the Green Bay mother-loving Packers. Patriots almost had a comeback against the Ravens last week. Uh, Mac Jones threw three interceptions, also hit the gritty, and then left with a high ankle sprain, likely not to play against the Green Bay Packers, so that's a bit rough. Meanwhile, the Packers coming off a big 14-12 win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, leaning on their defense and their special teams. The Packers, I think, should do much better this week. They are back at home. They got some home field advantage in the next few weeks, even though they are going over to London. The Packers, I think, should be able to defeat the Patriots, especially without Mac Jones. I think it's Brian Hoyer that's back there. And while he is familiar with the team, who oh, am I kidding? They're probably still going to be competitive. But if the defense plays the way they did last week against Tom Brady, they'll kick their ass. Then you got the Denver Broncos taking on the Vegas Raiders. The Broncos begging, pleading, for Russ to get cooking again. Want to cook? Nathaniel Hackett uh, had to hire someone to make sure he sucked a little bit less, but that offense was abysmal last week. Their defense looked very, very good in the 11 to 10 win over the 49ers. Meanwhile, the Raiders. We suck again. The only 0 3 team in the NFL. You had Fire McDaniels trending on Twitter after the game last week, and it's looking rough. And all I have to say about the Raiders is, if Devontae Adams wants to come home, he can at any point. Devontae, just blink your eyes twice, and we will bring you home. You don't have to do those Taco Bell commercials anymore, I promise. Come home. Please. But yeah, the Raiders, I mean, they don't commit to the run when it's working. McDaniels is just not a good coach. And the Broncos, I think, have a very, very good defense. So while Russ is unable to do anything, that offense is incredibly stagnant. I think the Broncos should do enough to win this game. Though the Raiders usually give them problems. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders win. I don't know. That division's a dumpster fire. But I'm going to pick the Broncos. Following that, you got a Sunday night football game, which should be amazing. And that's actually said non-sarcastically. You got the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers having to move to Miami because of the incoming hurricane. Looking at you, Ian. Not even looking at the hurricane. Your name's Ian. You did this. You know you did this. The Chiefs coming off a loss, an embarrassing loss, against the Indianapolis Colts last week. Meanwhile, the Buccaneers... Their offense pretty freaking terrible against the Green Bay Packers. This should be a really close game. The Buccaneers have a good defense, should get some weapons back, at the very least get Mike Evans back from suspension. Meanwhile, the Chiefs, they need a run game to get going, but it's probably not going to get going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playing in the Floridian Heat, hopefully. I am going to pick the Chiefs, however, to win this because I think they're going to bounce back from a bad loss last week. Patrick Mahomes still is Patrick Mahomes. They still have receiving threats. They still have Travis Kelsey. Their defense is underrated. And as long as Sky Moore doesn't muff anything, the Chiefs should still win. And finally, on Monday Night Football, you got the LA Rams taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Rams coming off with a win against the Cardinals. Meanwhile, the 49ers, uh, their best offensive play on Sunday night was the fact that Jimmy G got himself a safety instead of throwing a pick six. It's only a matter of time before Kurt Benker becomes QB1. Do it! Do it, unless he plays the Packers in the playoffs, and then I'll never forgive myself. But this game, it's an NFC West showdown. Could be good. It's an NFC championship game rematch. The Rams... I'm not going to say have looked amazing coming out into this season. The 49ers, they're the same. 
49ers are really going to have to rely on the run game, but I think the defense of the Rams is going to be enough to kind of hold them at bay. I know that the 49ers usually have the Rams number during the regular season, but I'm going to go for Sean McVay and the Rams here. I think Matt Stafford might have himself a big night, and because of that, the Rams could get the win and talk about themselves like they're actually good. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. How do you feel about these games shaking out in week four? Let me know. You guys send me at TomGrossyComedy.com or TomGrossyComedy, all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grossy. And as always, Go Paco.